One of the most harrowing stories of the First World War was the fate that a British nurse suffered at the hands of a German firing squad. Today, Edith Cavill is considered a hero in Britain, and a woman who gave her life in the face of evil. She was accused of almost being a spy, and being a woman who, during the German occupation of Brussels, sheltered British soldiers and helped them to escape to neutral Netherlands. She also helped French soldiers, and through her role as a nurse, she was able to do this. She continued for almost a year harbouring Allied soldiers, but then she was betrayed, and despite international law guaranteeing protection for medical personnel, this protection was said to have been invalidated, due to her actions in helping the military in an underhand capacity. But because of this, she then faced a firing squad, and was brutally executed. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of Edith Cavill, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Edith Cavill was originally from Norfolk, and she received a good education, and she worked as a governess for a family in Brussels from 1890 to 1895. However, she then came back to England to care for her father, and after he recovered, she sought a career as a nurse. She worked in a number of London hospitals, and dealt with typhoid epidemics which were sweeping through areas, such as Maidstone, and she helped to coordinate the nursing operations to deal with this. Following her training, she was employed as a private nurse, and she treated patients in their homes, and she even then became an assistant matron of St Leonard's Infirmary in Shoreditch. But after a number of years nursing in England, in 1907, Edith was recruited to be a matron of a newly established nursing school in Brussels. She then launched a nursing journal, and she was skilled as a trainer of nurses, and she worked at a large number of schools and was seen as a brilliant teacher. But as the First World War broke out, she was visiting her mother after her father's passing, and she then went to Brussels, and her clinic and school was taken over by the Red Cross. Edith continued to work in this hospital, however in November 1914, after the German occupation of Brussels, she began to shelter British soldiers, and to help them escape being a prisoner of war. They would be injured on the battlefield, and brought to the hospital for treatment, before they were sent to prisoner of war camps. Edith helped many escape this fate, and she helped to organise transport for them, to escape Belgium through the neutral Netherlands, where they could then be helped to go back to Britain, or the front line if they desired. The hospitals she was working at were treating casualties from both sides as well as civilians, but following the Battle of Mons, she helped to smuggle two soldiers after treatment to the Netherlands, and she then became an important member of a network of people who sheltered Allied soldiers and Belgians, able for military service, and she helped their escape. It's believed she helped around 200 soldiers for the Allied war effort, and these wounded soldiers were hidden from the Germans. They were given false papers by Prince Reginald de Croix at his chateau near to Mons. Following this, they were then held in the homes of Cavill, and others as their hosts would give them some money to reach the Dutch border, and guides would also help them do this. But Edith Cavill in doing this was in violation of German military law, and they grew suspicious of her. On the 3rd of August 1915 she was arrested, and was charged with harbouring Allied soldiers, after she had been betrayed by a collaborator. Inside the prison at St Gillies, she was held for 10 weeks, with the final two being in solitary confinement. She admitted she had helped 60 British and 15 French soldiers, and also 100 French and Belgian civilians to the frontier, and had sheltered many inside her home. She was brought to a court-martial, and was prosecuted for helping British and French soldiers, as well as young men who could fight against the Germans. She signed a statement admitting her guilt the day before her trial, and she said that a number of these soldiers wrote to her thanking her when they got back to Britain. According to German military law, in time of war, anyone who with the intention of aiding a hostile power, or of causing harm to Germany or Allied troops, was committing the crimes such as Edith did, and they were guilty of committing treason, and were punishable by death. But the first Geneva Convention normally guaranteed protection for nurses such as Edith Cavill, but this was forfeited, as it was deemed she was using her career as a cover to help the British war effort. The British government had their hands tied, and they could do nothing to help Edith, and they said, I'm afraid we are powerless. Some Germans actually believe she should have been spared due to her honesty and the fact she saved lives, but it's believed she may have been arrested for war treason and possibly may have even been recruited by the British Secret Intelligence Service. It was also considered that as she was questioned in French, her trial was militated in German, and that this may have led to some misinterpretation of her words. 
However, Edith Cavell's execution would go ahead, and this was considered by many to have been a war crime. The night before her execution, she told a minister, who had given her her last Holy Communion, that patriotism is not enough, I must have no hatred or bitterness to anyone. And these words were inscribed on a statue of her in Trafalgar Square in London. On the 12th of October 1915, she was taken from her prison to the site of her execution, a firing range in Scharmbeck. A priest who was an eyewitness described the final moments of Edith Cavell's life. He said, When we arrived at the Tier National, a company at full war strength, 250 men stood there, in accordance with the regulations, under the command of a staff officer. A military court councillor, Dr. Sterber, with his secretary, Captain Behrens, in command of St. Gilly's Prison, an officer from the commander's office and a medical man, Dr. Ben, were on the spot. We clergymen led the condemned persons to the front. The company presented their rifles, and the sentence was about to be read aloud in German and in French, when M. Baku called out with a clear voice in French, Comrades, in the presence of death, we are all comrades. He was not allowed to say anything more. The sentence was read out, and then the clergymen were permitted to have a last word with the condemned persons. I thought I had to make this as brief as possible. I took Miss Cavill's hand, and only said of course in English the words, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost, be with you for ever. Amen. She pressed my hand in return, and answered these words, Ask Mr. Gahan to tell my loved ones later, on that my soul, as I believe, is safe, and that I am glad to die for my country. Then I led her a few steps to the pole, to which she was loosely bound. A bandage was put over her eyes, which, as a soldier who put it on told me, were full of tears. Then a few seconds passed, which appeared to me like eternity, because the Catholic clergyman spoke longer with M. Baku, who was also being executed, until he stood at his pole. Immediately the sharp commands were given, two salvos crashed at the same time, each of eight men at a distance of six paces, and the two condemned persons sank to the ground without a sound. My eyes were fixed exclusively on Miss Cavill, and what they now saw was terrible. With a face streaming with blood, one shot had gone through her forehead. Miss Cavill had sunk forwards, but three times she raised herself up without a sound, with her hands stretched upwards. I ran forward with the medical man, Dr. Ben, to her. He was doubtless right when he stated that these were only reflex movements. The bullet holes were as large as fists in the back, proved in addition that with any doubt she was killed immediately. I only mention this fact because untrue rumours have been connected with it. A few moments later the coffins were lowered into the graves, and I prayed over Edith Cavill's grave, and invoked the Lord's blessing over her poor corpse. Then I went home, almost sick in my soul. Finally, no soldier had refused to shoot. The military judge told me that before I arrived with Miss Cavill, he addressed the soldiers saying it was hard for them to fire at a woman, but he wished to impress upon them that she was not a mother. Nobody refused to shoot, and no interval of any kind occurred. Edith Cavill's remains after the war were returned to Britain, and she was one of only three whose sets of remains were repatriated. Her body was subject to a state funeral before she was then reburied in Norwich Cathedral. She was a nurse who tried her best to help people get back to Britain during the First World War, and she saved the lives of a number of soldiers who may have perished in the prisoner of war camps, or in executions. But ultimately at the end of the firing squad, Edith Cavill was executed when she could probably have been saved. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.